What's up everyone? Welcome back to Wait Your Turn. I'm Jordan and today we're looking at a game I've been anticipating for quite a while actually. I've seen it kind of pop up on Facebook groups, board game, whatever. And that is Wonderland's War by Druid City Games. So without further ado, let's go down this rabbit hole. So for any of you who know me, I am a big fan. My mom's actually an even bigger fan of Lewis Carroll and his books, Alice in Wonderland and all that, but I just love the themes and personally, I was very excited about this game because I thought it was going to be a dungeon crawler or some sort of miniature based heavy kind of game, but it is it completely sur surprised me actually because it's it's not going in that direction at all. In fact, it is a card drafting, bag building, one dice rolling. There isn't really that much dice rolling. There's only one dice die in this game as far as I know. And it's all about gaining control. So it's all games that really are outside of my wheelhouse. Card drafting, uh, bag building. I mean, I, I looked at Isofarian Guard a little bit, but this is completely other. I mean, it's kind of dudes on the map with um, with some area control elements, but these are games that I, or genres of board games that I don't really explore myself. I played Seven Wonders one time, didn't really enjoy it personally, so um, remember, I'm <laughs> where I come from, Dungeons & Dragons background, I love miniatures, I love heavy grids and battling dudes and rolling dice, I'm a very... I, I am basically the epitome of Ameritrash, but I, I, that doesn't mean I'm not classy. So, we're looking at Wonderland's War. I'm going to give you my honest feedback on this game, even though this isn't really a game that I would go for myself. So, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts about this game, go over some of the basic details. This video isn't intended to actually teach you how to play, but it's really to give you my honest thoughts on this game if you've already educated yourself on the Kickstarter page, if you've already been following how to play and the basics basic basics of this game, so the bare essentials, and I'm going to give you my feedback, my thoughts on some key elements and key points of this Kickstarter campaign, which is currently on Kickstarter, raising almost, almost uh, $400,000 with almost 5,000 backers. So it's fairly early in their campaign. They've surpassed their original goal of 50,000, as do most Kickstarter campaigns that I do cover on this channel. So, it's also based in LA, California, close to home, and it is by a fairly, um, fairly active, uh, pro uh, what is it, creator, with six projects created, 878 backed projects, that almost seems like an obscene amount of backed projects, and your house is just going to be full of things, but it's for two to five players, it's, it is a competitive game, you're not going to be making any friends here, 75 minutes to an hour and a half for ages 13 and up, so it is a very interesting theme and a very interesting take on Wonderland itself, where you will be playing one of the major character factions, Alice with her Vorpal Blade, the Red Queen with her Executioner, the Jabberwock himself, and the Mad Hatter, not to mention the bonus and newly unlocked Cheshire Cat faction. So, as one of these insane, crazy characters, you'll be vying for control over the, I guess, somehow more serious Wonderland and you're trying to return it to its former insane glory. So, uh, there are miniatures in here, that is an option, but one thing that you will notice for this campaign is that there are two options. One is the normal retail option that will only be standees, and then the epic deluxe version for $80 that comes with miniatures. So the normal version will be $50, which seems fair for a lot of cardboard, a lot of just normal meeple tokens, but then the deluxe version, it's still not hundred dollars, but I don't know this uh, you, you get what you pay for so it seems like the pricing is fair And if you like this game you support the creator you like the concept by all means you should back so the game the game centers around two Two phases. Uh, I'm not even gonna say major phases just two phases That's essentially the game the first phase is the tea party So there's all these cards laid around this central tea party table I actually really love that design the fact that the tea party is a central element of this game when it really is such an iconic uh, aspect of Alice in Wonderland's uh, Epic I guess and so you'll be drafting cards and those cards essentially will do Basically one thing. I mean, they might have a couple different effects that I missed out on, but they essentially build your bag. So you'll either be putting your, like, roses or rooks or strength tokens into your bag. And so this bag 
is basically the game itself. I, I, I don't know, the aesthetic of the bag, I mean, I, I was kind of, it's novel, you know, you don't see it very often, and you definitely do not see it in conjunction with card drafting, so it's already kind of weird. I, they must have been drinking that tea because the the elements in this game are are insane in a way. So as you're drafting these cards, you're building your deck, and you'll be taking, I guess, taking turns to draft these cards and to build your bag and to basically scramble up the probabilities of your bag. In essence, you want your bag to be full of things so you don't draw madness tokens or you draw tokens that are appropriate to whatever domain or region you're trying to conquer. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> um, the second phase of the game is the battle phase in which you'll actually be drawing the chips that you've drafted into your bag. These chips will influence your positioning on the battlefield. They will allow you to activate different effects. Um, they'll also allow you to unlock certain abilities. Um, but essentially, you'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with other bag bearers, bag barons, and you'll all be drawing tokens at the same time and revealing the various effects that are associated with that. Um, those effects may be madness, which will destroy your own army, or will be beneficial and will gain you like maybe two times bonuses if you draw a rose token or um, certain military reinforcements in certain regions and to essentially affect the four or five, I believe it's five various regions of Wonderland. And that's basically the game. You'll be you'll be drawing these tokens, you'll be drafting cards into your bag, and it's push your luck. How risky are you going to be as a leader or as a faction head in Wonderland? Are you going to keep drawing bags and risk busting or essentially getting maximum madness and uh, essentially lose your campaign? Um, the board for this game is very busy. I'm just going to say that straight out. There's so many different elements. I kind of like the color scheme. I kind of like uh, the design. Or, no. I like the color scheme. I like the whole... I just like Alice in Wonderland. I think that's what I'm trying to say. But the board itself is very busy. You have the tea party. You have the regions. You have several meters. You have a meter that goes around the board to indicate victory points. You have a meter to indicate strength. There's a lot of different things going around. It's not exactly tidy, um, but it's very much the chaotic madness of Wonderland, uh, which I assume is what they're going for. The faction boards also, I mean, their design could have been a little bit better, but um, essentially you put chips there. It allows you to basically turn some of your chips and forge them into more powerful weapons or tools, which which basically adds strength. So you're t kind of taking out the weaker chips of your bag and you're upgrading them to stronger versions and you put those in your bag. So I feel like the whole bag building mechanic, I mean, I just haven't seen something truly compelling about it. Um, it just hasn't been something that's really grabbed my eye or my attention. But that's essentially the game. Uh, you want to be recruiting Wonderlandians. One of the one of the coolest aspects of this game is the fact that you will be playing as or inter interacting with or recruiting various classic Wonderlandian characters. The Caterpillar, the Walrus, the March Hare, the Humpty Dumpty, the Humpty Dumpty, the Egg. And you will be conscripting them into your war, into your battle, and be able to use a variety of different effects. So it's very much a rule affecting rule game, affecting rule game, and it's all about uh, just just playing it. Um, it. It was a little bit disappointing to me to see such a rich theme be put over kind of a thin-skinned game. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I haven't dove too deep into this. Remember, for these Should You Back videos, I have not had the honor of playing these games myself, but this is all based on other videos, other playthroughs, and other how-to-play videos, and basically what I'm seeing on the Kickstarter campaign page itself. To give you an honest, similar to yours, opinion of this game as another potential backer. So this game, it um, there are a ton of different kind of random victory conditions also kind of thrown into the mix. So you can place these castles on different locations. If you win a battle, you can erect a structure which gives you victory points at the end of the game. You can also complete quests. Uh, quests, they're not exactly incredibly thematic quests in the lore of Wonderland, but they're more like, you know, you have a certain amount of strength here and you uh, have this number of rows tokens and therefore you complete this quest which will then uh, count for double points at the end of the game. It's a victory point game. I don't like victory point games personally. I just feel like it, it, it doesn't really create a story. It's just like how many points can I accumulate with this delightfully themed game. And so that is just my unfortunate opinion regarding this. Um, the miniatures are actually spectacular. I love those. I love how 
they're so cute. I mean, they they really capture kind of the spirit and the simplicity, the childlike simplicity of Wonderland. And I feel like this game is very accessible for many ages. I mean, you're just picking cards and you're drawing tokens out of bag, and that's essentially the game. I'm I'm sure I'm sure that like any game, there is a deeper strategy when you actually get down into it. But this game is almost deceptively simple in that way, but yet extremely random based on the bag building, based on how many times you draw tokens out of the bag. There are some ways to mitigate the madness, the penalties of drawing bad tokens out, but in, the, in a sense, the game kind of plays itself. You build the engine with the card drafting, and then based on whether you draw or not, the game just continues. And so that is the game, and basically your player choice is to keep going or to stop. And there are some abilities that you can uh, use, but those are essentially, um, you have to work up to them. So that is um, Wonderland's War. It's, it's very simple. I mean, it is nice that they have the standy versions. They have the cardboard chips. You could upgrade to premium chips. You could upgrade to uh, miniatures. Uh, the miniatures would definitely be worth it. I would not back this game just for the cardboard game, but the miniatures actually do have some some wondrous charisma to them. So that is basically Wonderland's War. Um, I feel like they do have, oh, they do, they do have some storage solutions for these miniatures, which is nice. And that is basically it. I feel like I might have glossed over some interesting points and aspects of this game, but uh, it's actually very, very simple and very straightforward and to the point. So if you like, if you like Alice in Wonderland, this game is I mean, it is wrapped in the theme, but yet it does not scream Alice in Wonderland. I mean, the there are like madness tokens. Madness does have an, a detrimental effect that reverberates through the game, but yet this game is a is is using the theme of Alice in Wonderland rather than channeling it, if that's how I can express it. So if you enjoy the miniatures, if you enjoy Alice in Wonderland as a theme itself, if you like card drafting, you like bag building, um, this game does give you plenty of chances to do so, but yet it's, it, it, it's something is lacking. Maybe the story, maybe it's just because I don't play many competitive games or card drafters or bag builders myself, but this game falls a little bit short for me. So should you back it, it is up to you. Um, uh, for me, myself, I will not be backing this game, unfortunately, but yet I would, uh, if, if you're a designer and you're listening to me, you should make a dungeon crawler Alice in Wonderland, and that, that is my plug for this, this, uh, this video. So, that is, um, the game. I'm not even gonna look at shipping or the updates or anything like that. This is just based on what's on the Kickstarter campaign page on their front page. So, that is Wonderland's War by Druid City Games. Those are my opinions on the game. Um, this is this has been a wait your turn review. That was actually fairly short for a wait your turn review, but um, I'm gonna put their link down below. You should check it out um, if the aesthetic speaks to you. I mean, the art here is pretty pretty cool, and um, the mechanics are very uh, simple and easy to introduce to people. Like you could teach this game in about two minutes tops. I mean, the way I taught it, perfect, right? So anyway. If you uh, like my reviews, my should you back in videos, please please remember to subscribe, drop a like, and um, a huge shout out to my wonderful patrons and supporters on Patreon, Elias, Alan, Chen, Rybok, Gabrielle, Matthias, oh man, there are two more, I, I just forgot, oh, Chen, Alan, who else? Man, there are too many now. Oh, <laughs> dang it. All right, you're all going to be mad if I forget your name. So let me look that up real quick. Richard. Richard and lastly, Hekaheth. Wow, the best for last. Isn't that right? So thank you all for being loyal and wonderful supporters on my Patreon page. For all you who have not checked out my Patreon page, we're going to be doing a monthly live stream basically talking about Kickstarter, talking about game board design, and that's all there on my Patreon page. There's a link down below in the description. Uh, our next stream is going to be on the 28th of February at the end of the month, and we're going to be talking all about Kickstarter. So you can check out my Patreon page down below. Again, hope you all have a wonderful day. There are going to be more videos coming out because there are a ton of great projects on Kickstarter right now. It is like being in a candy shop, so, or at a tea party, or whatever you, you enjoy. So, thank you all for sticking around, thank you for waiting your turn, and as always, now it's your turn. Mm -hmm.